Do you like me? You like my smile? You like my outfit? It's all suffering. In a state of suffering. If you attach to that. And I'm not a liberated being. This here shall liberate you. If you like it. This is a message for maybe two or three people in the world. But soon everybody will understand it doesn't matter how long it takes. Time is just the awareness of something that changes. And we call it seconds, minutes, hours, light years, whatever. Are you suffering? You may say, no, I'm not suffering. I have a family, I have kids, I have a job. Wonderful. Congratulations. What if you go with your family along the street, a huge truck comes, drives down your entire family, but you survive. Are you then happy? Or is the cause of that was was your happiness before, now the cause of your suffering? This is the question. We are talking here about the end of suffering. And as I always say, this is for two or three people in the world. But the time has come to change our thinking. Until now, mankind, according to the Book of Light, the greatest handwritten book on earth was dictated to me in Los Angeles when I sat homeless under the bridge. I had everything and I still have everything. I was homeless for a while. Google my name. You will get 170 million entries. Christian Anders. I had the most beautiful women in the, in the entire world. Heather Thomas was one of the ugliest, if I may say so. By ugly, I mean not all this. Physical beauty is important. You know. If you have the most beautiful women in the world every night in your bed, well, it's also this, okay, but, you know, after a year or two, it may not be so attractive anymore. Because what people are suffering, the reason is change. Attraction to change, which they don't want. Forever young, forever happy, forever this, forever that. The attraction to the physical world and by physical, I also mean highest heavens on earth. I mean also the heavenly worlds. According to the book of light that was dictated to me by the great Johan, even heaven is transient. <laughs> this is, of course, a shocking message for all you dear Christians and Muslims. What is the end of suffering? Dear friends, this is the most radical message that was ever revealed. And the time has come. Because for over 150 billion years, we have we followed a path that leads to, unhappering, to, to unhappiness, to suffering. Unhappiness to suffering. Excuse my lousy English. I'm a German. I'm not a liberated being. Watch out if some guru tells you I'm liberated. Most of times he wants you, your money to put it in the bank account in Switzerland or he wants you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm 76 years old. <laughs> but the book of light kept me young. And I have a responsibility. Look at this. The greatest handwritten book in the world. 
summarized in one little book for now in English. The Book of Light for Children. There's another book called Divine Message from the True God. And by that I don't mean a creator God. And I'm not an atheist, by the way. But our children are our future. We all may be so much engulfed in material world, even in heavenly. That we may not be ready to even detach from that. What is the end of suffering? It is, and now this is the most radical message in the world. It is the end of body, emotion, mind, soul and spirit. Even the so cherished spirit by religious people. All the heavens shall pass, it says in the Bible. We have to begin with children. We adults, me included, are still too much attached to matter. I'm not as much attached to matter as I was. <laughs> I can say that. <laughs> Maybe that kept me so young. <laughs> Who knows? You will hear in this video sponsored by Nilakanta Agni. Agni. A-G-N-I. Fire. She is fire. She is fire to the lie that will be destroyed until the truth shall liberate us. And by liberation, dear friends, I mean also liberation from the heavenly world that the Brahmins and the Krishnaites and so forth cherish so much union with Brahman. Union with Brahman is not the highest. <laughs> What now? Listen. The end of suffering is according to the Book of Light. The end of seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, thinking. Even the end of thinking. My speech, what I pass on as un... How can I say? Unperfect, imperfect. I am, is passing on the perfect knowledge revealed in the book of life. The end of suffering is the end of attachment to that which makes you suffer. Our children are our hope. Should they continue as we, as it is preached by worldly and religious leaders, what has that done to the world? Look at the world. We live in an insane world ruled by insane rulers. <laughs> People who are extreme say they all belong in the insane asylum. If you say such a thing, you may be right. But you have to offer a solution. Everything that you are aware of arises and passes away. No? Am I wrong? I'm not, I'm not even leaving this earthly situation for one second. Because only here on earth you can attain liberation. You don't have to wait for a heavenly world because in heaven it's wonderful. Oh, beautiful. I must there in meditation sometimes. But the day will come when even the highest angels will grow together, will be, will be forced to be together. And they will be sucked in to the source. And this is what I'm talking about. The end of suffering is the source If you define the source, you are already wrong. I won't tell you what the source is, but I can tell you what the source is not. 
everything that you are aware of arising and passing away can't be the source. Otherwise, you would be that which you are aware of. And of course, a child of five years can understand. See, I spoke with my, with my, um, with a friend of mine who has a five-year-old child. And, um, and that reminded me to an experience that I had with my grandchild when we were sitting in Berlin on in the Kupfersendamm. And I said to my grandchild, Nathan, Nathan, or Nathan, we, but we write him Nathan, N-A-T-A-N. I said, Nathan, and, and, and that was when he was five years old, five years, dear friends, five. I said, do you see that man who is passing us by? He said, no. <laughs> and that man left around the corner and disappeared. And I asked my grandchild, Nathan, Nathan, are you that man? Or were you that man? He said, no, no. I said, why not? He said, because then I would have disappeared now. <laughs> he disappeared. Dear friends, this common sense proved that this child my grandchild is light years ahead of any Nobel Prize Award winner because he, he completely pointed to the self that is denied in most Buddhist teachings. They take the term anatta. I teach Sanskrit also in this book here. Anatta means not the self. What the Buddha said. Whatever you are aware of as arising and passing away is not yourself. This is clear to me. I don't know if it's not clear to you, but to my five-year-old grandchild, it was clear to Nathan. So that's the teaching of the Book of Light. Whatever you are aware of is not yourself. And this is called anatta. Everything that is not yourself is anatta. So, the Buddhists, or most of them, the Dalai Lamaists, I call them, concluded from there that there is no self. <laughs> I mean, what an insult to the teaching of the Buddha. If that is all there is, that there is no self, and after death you're dead, why all the teachings, why all the, the, the discipline, the... Um, Slokas and talas and the, and the the cities and so forth. You see, the insanity of Buddhism of today. Thank God, I would have almost said, that Mahatera, Dr. Georg Grimm, came. He died when I was born in 1945. And he said Buddhism and the Buddhist straight. <laughs> in declaring clearly It doesn't mean, anatta doesn't mean that there is no self. Anatta means non-self. It just means that you cannot be aware of the self. You know, because every, you cannot be conscious of the self. Because every awareness and consciousness is always away from the one who is conscious to that of which he is conscious. As my grandchild Nathan said. But it doesn't mean there is no self. <laughs> you cannot be aware of the self. Self-consciousness is a lie to the world. A lie. They make billions of dollars with it. The self can only be conscious of what it is not. <laughs> I don't say you shouldn't be attached to it, do it, but it's suffering. Why is attached being to body, emotion, mind, soul, and spirit suffering? You tell me. Why? Because it's taken away from you over and over again. Now, many people may say, so what? I like it. 
No problem, do what you want. The Book of Light explains the world better than any scientific or other scripture in the world in, in order to detach yourself from the world. Until now, all scientific books have been written in order to cling to the world, to be attached to it. And what is the result, I ask you, of such teachings? It is pain and suffering. 25,000 children die each day of starve to death. <clears throat> they die of hunger in the Sahara or anywhere. The mothers, the breasts are hanging thin like fingers. Her last thought is, God, how could you do this to my child? And she breaks down and the child breaks down and they die. Wonderful teaching, no? That a woman or a human being can blame God. A God, a seemingly all-knowing God for their pain and suffering. Well, you may have enough, I have enough, I'm a millionaire. <laughs> That doesn't uh, hinder me to, to detach from this world step by step. I'm not a guru. Watch out. If you take me as a guru, you insult me. This is guru. And for our children, this. This is the summary. This is the summary. Almost. <laughs> I'm reminded to that crook Bush who always said, it's a fact, it's a fact. <laughs> And he lied to the whole world. <clears throat> And it came out that it was a lie. Am I telling the truth? Who else than you can be the judge for that? Excuse me. Listen. Some people, listen, I'm the idol of uh, all Germans and Spanish sometimes too. 25 million records. Till today when I sing, Google me. Thousands of people are coming. In Hamburg, 410,000 people came to my open air concert. Oh, wow. Well, Why do I tell that? To brag? <laughs> Who may be? My Anata. But it didn't make me happy. It doesn't make me happy. The time for detachment from that which makes you suffer has come. You can do that in one life or... And now comes the important part. Change your direction of thinking. Until now, you were thinking, I want a job, I want a wife, I want children, I want a family, or even the gay people, they say, well, I want a job, I want sex with another man, okay, uh, they say, <laughs> but I want also a child, I want a family. They are, they think they can find happiness in a transient world, but the Book of Light and the Book of Light for Children teaches us, you cannot find Happiness in a transient, transitory, impermanent world. It's not possible. Why? Because that of which you hope that it makes you happy will be taken away from you. This is why they write songs like Forever Young and so forth. Now we come to a state of being, dear friends, the end of suffering. Yeah, we are not theorizing here. Maybe now more than two or three or four people understand me. That would be great and wonderful. Although thousands of people have already read the Book of Light in German translation. You can find that everywhere, das Buch des Lichts. But the time has come now. I'm returning, so to speak, to Los Angeles where I was in order to spread the message in English. I want to come to the topic of music or of the state of free of suffering. What is that? It is a state of being free attached to seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, feeling, thinking. Many of you may say, then I'm dead. No, you're just free from the desire for seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, thinking. And those people 
who have a family or who want kids, actually they are egotistic, egoistic people. They want that something of themselves survives. I have always said, the love of a mother is the most egoistic thinking that you can imagine. Why does she... Listen. I had a trainer, Mike Anderson, karate trainer, in garmisch partenkirchen when I was a freak for full contact fighting and all that nonsense. Okay. Why did I say that now? Oh, <laughs> well, I'm 76, excuse me. Yeah, good. Now, he told me about a story that <clears throat> was true. Because I read about it also in another uh, pamphlet by the U.S. Army. In Vietnam, a jeep drove over a child, a Vietnamese child. Well, not really over, it was a half of it, you know. A woman came. She was maybe 40 kilo, you know, but, but I don't, she, she was thin like a stick, no power. No. She lifted the jeep, <clears throat> pushed the child away, let the jeep down and died. All her life energy was done in that second she gave it all. She gave her life for her kids. Now you may say, oh, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, it is wonderful. But it's pure egotism. Why? She wanted that something of her that grew nine months or whatever. I'm a seven month person. <laughs> that grew nine months in her body. She wanted that to survive. Of her. And that's why such a woman and others too, of course, if their kids are in danger, they would kill for them so that the kid can survive. That something of themselves can survive, no? Or something that they identify with themselves and that's the problem. Am I the body? The Book of Light teaches you have a body. The Book of Light explains all the galaxies in the universe. Seen, unseen, rupa, arupa. The visible world in the, in the form world, in the formless world, and so forth. But for what reason? And I tell you for what reason. Until now, science in schools and universities teaches the entire world only 5% of what the Book of Light is teaching. That's something else. But in order to, be, to attach yourself more to the world, to reincarnate, to continue suffering, how often or how many more lives do you want to be born, live and die? Tell me. Because you have no other option. You say, you don't know what there is even beyond the highest heavens of, or the highest levels of heaven who are all transient, these highest, so-called highest heavens. Truth is, beyond seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, thinking. And this book, and the book of light of children, for children, oh, of children maybe, yeah, <laughs> causes us to think in a complete other way. Back to the source. Until now, all Scriptures in the world, as incomplete they may be, have taught away from the source and now come in order to find the source. You cannot find the source of the universe if you drift away from the source. This is like somebody who dives into water to find the dryness. <laughs> the entire world is insane. We live in an insane world ruled by insane people. And this is why I always say, man should not rule over man. This should rule. Tell us something now. This book costs 2,400 euro, about 
1200 or $1,100. Now, aha, he wants to make a book selling show. Since 30 years, I don't take one cent for my book, for my books. Goes all to a little edition. Now, I have sold of this, this book five. <laughs> well, who can pay $1,200? This costs less, this costs $5. See what I mean? <laughs> None of my books I take money. And the the book um, Divine Message from the True God Nirvana that costs I think seven dollars. I don't know. <laughs> huh? You can find it on Amazon. I take no money from my books, and if I wouldn't have no money, I wouldn't take none. Also. I can't wait the day. I can't await the day when I don't come back anymore in this insane world ruled by insanity. Dear friends, this teaching is more radical than anything radical that you may have. Whoa. This, you know, this is 20, no, uh, 40 pounds, 50 pounds. <laughs> Dictated to me under the bridges of Los Angeles. And then I was saved. In the sense, saved materially. Somebody came to me and said, what are you doing? And so, can I help you? Blah, blah. And I had my first TV show. And I played theater in Hollywood. And so you go on, on YouTube, Christian Anders Hollywood, you'll see. And I wrote songs. One of which you will hear now. And now we come to that, dear friends. The teaching of the book of light leads to detaching from the book of light when you don't need it anymore. And you can rest. You have true situation that cannot be changed. Where was the first, the first war? Tell me. You Christians and Muslims. Was it on earth? I don't think so. It was in heaven. Maybe one angel was shining higher than the other one. Or had be more beautiful colors. I don't know. That's where it started. Listen. Dear children. Dear children. Dear children, listen. Whatever you do, you do to yourself. How can that be? I was just, maybe, maybe you know, a, a, a boy who wants to mob others or wants to be, you know, mm, I just hit him. <laughs> nobody saw it. I took his handy, I ran away. Whee! Ha <laughs> I have a handy. You think nobody saw it? Read this book. There are so many illustrations in it. See? When you help others, you create a good karma. No, I'm, I was just jumping topic now. Whatever you do, you do to yourself, dear children. If you beat somebody up, if you hate somebody, if you do this or that, this energy... According to when you will go later to school in, in 10th or 12th class, you will learn of the, of the teachings of Einstein or maybe uh, the Maya teachings of um, energy cannot be destroyed and so forth and so on. So energy goes out and returns to the sender. Then you get it. Look around. How people are suffering. Now you may argue, and, and some 10 year old did that, said that to me. Well, then he deserves it. <laughs> it's his karma. I just put David back. If you think this way, you will earn the karma of mercilessness. This is circulatory thinking what you do. And you will again be. Victim, perpetrator, victim, perpetrator, victim, per until you learn. This book shortens 
you have suffering. I'm not saying that everybody should attain nirvana. I mentioned now the word for the first or second time. In this life, I'm not saying that. Listen. If a huge tanker, a, a huge ship, you know, with, with huge cargo, the ship is maybe 200 meters long, 300, drives full space, um, full speed. <laughs> Sorry. Excuse my lousy in English. So, in one direction. Now the captain decides, I want to stop the ship. I want, I want to go back. He stops all motors. He even puts them on return. And the ship doesn't stop. It will go for miles still. Believe me, it will go for one, two miles. Even if you put full power back, nah. Many of you who are ready for that truth said, Lanu, I tried this and the dweller of the threshold came up and blocked me. Now, I cannot explain to you all the things you would have to, first of all, get in touch with. And also, this book you can have on PDF. Yes, don't you worry. And yes, dear friends, you can have this book for free. You don't have to pay anything. Write to me and you'll get the download on PDF. But I'm saying that the Book of Light teaches books have great occult power. We should not underestimate that this can be a guardian angel to you. Five. I, I sold five of them. <laughs> of course, many people took the PDF. Okay. Listen. I am only passing on what was taught to me. I didn't even want it. The Mahachohan said to me, be silent, sit down and write what I dictate to you. And I did. Do with it what you want. I fulfilled my purpose. And uh, in our next video, we will use this little book here. Because, as I said, our children are our future. And I would suggest to each adult to read this before you read that. Because the truth shall, can be explained in few words. But then, of course, come all the detailed questions and so therefore here. The Book of Light explains the entire world more detailed than any other book in the world could do. But in order to detach from it, <laughs> to detach from seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, thinking. Listen, some Buddhists who misunderstand Buddhism, they were asked, for instance, the Dalai Lama, which is in my esteem, well, let's be friendly. Okay. He explained, <laughs> this confused man, uh, that uh, when they asked him, what is nirvana? And then he insulted the Buddha. He said, he took a, a candle, lightened it, and said, this is nirvana, and blew it out. And insisted in saying you are destroyed there. Now, a greater insult to the message of the Buddha can be done. The candle is still there or it's just not burning any longer. This is the difference. This is the difference. You're not destroyed in nirvana. You just overcame your desire for 
seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, for body, emotion, mind, soul and spirit. More radical is not possible. This is the more radical teaching. It leads to the end of suffering. To the end of suffering. And uh, it doesn't say that you have to reach it in one life. I can't reach it in this life. <laughs> I'm still too much attached. Not anymore as attached as I was, that I may add. But I'm still certain things that I like. This is why you shouldn't take me as a guru or anybody else as a guru. I warn you of these people, especially here on on internet. They teach how to enlarge yourself to be a to become self-aware, self-conscious. It's all a lie. The self cannot be conscious of itself. It can all, only be aware, self-awareness, of what it is not. Because what it is aware of, by the way, is arising and fading away. So it can't be it, because it's still there. Aware, being aware of that change. So therefore, in my next video, I will talk about this little book. It may encourage children to rethink. Dear, um, dear friends, I must tell you something. Jesus said, your, your people in your house your family, your friends, will become your enemies. That's what he said. Why? Because his teaching, of the, the true teaching of the Master Jesus, which is revealed here, not the, that which they changed later in, in church, that's something else. I wrote a book, The True Meaning of the Bible, in German, Die wahre Bedeutung der Bibel. If you know about German, can speak German a little bit, you can may read that. But it is also <clears throat> revealed here. Deine Hausgenossen werden deine Feinde sein. Your, <clears throat> your friends will become your enemies. Your own family will become your enemies. Why did he say that? He meant, if you aim for detachment from the world, and until now, you were together with those and had the same goal as being attached to the world, to reach certain things in the world and so forth. And you suddenly change your direction. And this is what I want to encourage you, children. It may be a big problem. And I can only hope that children have parents who think further than their nose who are aware of the fact that it is time to change your thinking. All the time, for 150 billion years, teaches the Book of Life, we were thinking in the wrong way, which caused the world with, with everything in it. There was no creator there. No creator. You are God. You created yourself, aided by other powers, teaches the Book of Life. But this process, where you caused yourself, by ignorance, to leave the source and to fall into the material world, this moment is out of your memory. At this moment, you caused those energies of which now you are aware, but you can't explain them. I'm talking to you, my heart is pumping, circulation works. I do this, I don't know how many muscles are right now in action. I should know it if I would be the body or... I should know it. I'm not the body. I use it. And this is why you can't say I am this and that. You can, I'm not this and that. That you can say. And this rethinking from the direction in which we thought right now, until now, this is done by the Book of Light for Children and by the German Book of Light, of course, translated in 13 uh, volumes. And this is the hardest. If you are ready to rethink, they are not. Who were you surrounding until now? What do you think how, 
what do they say? They say, you're crazy. What are you doing? And something in them may even tell them you are right. But that disturbs them even more, most or more, excuse me. Because they may become aware of that all the time they were thinking in the wrong direction. I say it's not the wrong direction. There is nothing wrong in the world. Whatever you do leads you sooner or later to the source, no matter how long it may be. The Book of Light teaches 311 trillion, 40 billion years of human and cosmic evolution. I go now a little bit into detail, but, but only to show you why we left the source, fell into material world, identified ourselves with that, and are suffering, and we are suffering constantly from the fact that this is ripped over and over again from us. Why do you think they are at the cemeteries and funerals? They are so sad, they should dance like some Indians do, but they are more, more clever. They, they wear white and dance because they know he is in a better world, unless it's an evil being. <laughs> then he is in karma loka. Not karma, but karma loka. In hell, reason. You see, the Book of Light teaches all levels. It teaches you from where you go from now. According to your actions. Alike attracts alike. You cannot expect living as a drug added porno star uh, yielding to violence and perversion and hope to be reborn, to be reborn a saint. This is crazy. You cannot expect it. And you can also not <clears throat> hope that Jesus forgives you all your sins, those pedophile priests and so forth. They say, well, the devil made me do it, you know, but Jesus will forgive me. And tomorrow I will sin again, and then he will forgive me again. You will see what happens. You better study the Book of Light and the Book of Light for children. Dear friends, to the two or three who are still listening, <laughs> I say thank you. And the Book of Light teaches you should also not be attached to hearing. Unless it leads you to detachment. And the following mantra that you can hear now, I hope it will lead you to detachment from hearing. What I mean is this. Soul breath meditation is also taught in this little book. And in other books, in the Book of Life. It's a meditation in which you reach the state of being detached from everything. A nirvanic state of being. Sooner or later. We'll talk about this in another video. The mantra, Om Mani Padme Hum, should be, as the Book of Light suggests, listen to the mantra... Then, meditate in the silence. And you will reach sooner or later the end of suffering. <laughs> um.